Hi everyone, thanks for watching this video on the COVID-19 outbreak. We are Brandon Abunu, Sanai Yudbarek, and Pluny Penix from Brown, UC Berkeley, and SF State. We are researchers, and we'd like to share some of our knowledge. Many of you may be severely affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Your classes canceled, shops, cafes, and churches closed. You may be out of work or worried about your health. We know this is an extremely stressful time for many of you. You may also have like a thousand questions. Like, why are we stuck at home and why are the schools closed? Well, the short answer is because we need to slow down the spread of this virus. But you may think, well, there have been viruses before. We didn't close schools and shops and gyms and churches and bars and restaurants and everything for those. Well, so here is some info. First, schools have been closed before. For example, in Mexico, schools were closed to halt the spread of the swine flu in 2009. During the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918, schools were closed in many parts of the United States. Second, this virus is more virulent than many other viruses. This means that it can make folks very sick. Specifically, it can lead to severe pneumonia, which means that people can't breathe and they need respiratory support. And that is not just for very old people. For example, in the Netherlands, half of the people in the intensive care for COVID-19 are under the age of 50. So what do we know about how the SARS-CoV-2 virus spreads? Since this is a new virus, we don't know the answer very precisely yet, but this is what we know so far. People can catch the virus when they are in close proximity to others that carry the virus. The disease primarily spreads through tiny droplets of bodily fluids such as saliva or mucus from an infected person when sneezing or coughing. These droplets can come into direct contact with other people or can infect those when touching an infected surface, subsequently touching their face. Sneezing and coughing are dangerous because they create droplets that contain virus. The good thing about these droplets, however, is that they are fairly heavy and fall to the ground quickly. They don't remain suspended in the air for a long time. To protect against droplets, doctors and nurses may wear face masks and goggles. A big mystery, and one of the keys to why growth in SARS-CoV-2 has been so explosive in some settings, is that we now know that the virus can be transmitted prior to the onset of symptoms. This is really a big deal. What it means is that individuals can have no symptoms, walk around, travel, or live life like a normal day and still spread disease. This can be several days before the onset of symptoms. Because these people are not sneezing or coughing, it's not entirely clear how they can infect others. In addition to transmission directly between people, recent studies suggest an additional route of transmission through fomites or physical surfaces and objects that carry infection. If the SARS-CoV-2 virus can be transmitted through touching surfaces, it's important to know how long the virus can stay on such a surface in a form that it can infect someone else. Studies show that SARS-CoV-2 virus was detectable up to four hours in copper, up to 24 hours on cardboard, and up to two to three days on stainless steels and plastic. Studies also show that the virus was detectable in aerosols for up to three hours. When we say that the virus is airborne, we are referring to its ability to be transmitted in an aerosolized form. So what does this mean? This means that the virus is generated and can survive in small droplet particles that remain in the air and retain their infectivity for long periods. We should be very clear that just because it can survive in aerosols that were created in a lab, does not mean that it is transmitted through aerosols in real life. All of this means that we should be mindful of surfaces and objects as well as other people. We may want to clean or wipe down items that might have been passed between multiple individuals. We've learned about the various ways that SARS-CoV-2 gets from person to person. How does this manifest in the real world? Let's look at some examples. There's a story about a lawyer in New York who got infected and end up infecting a whole bunch of others. They found that this one person infected his son, his wife, and their daughter. He infected the neighbor who drove him to the hospital, a friend he spent time with, the friend's wife and kid, 
and two people who worked as caterers at an event the lawyer attended. What do all of these connections have in common? We believe that they were at some point in the same room, probably in close proximity. And when you're at a close distance to someone, that is one way that the infection jumps from person to person. Now, if you can get it by sitting in the car together, you can imagine that you can get it by sitting in a classroom or at a bar or in church together. And that is why your school may be closed. And that is why you may be stuck at home. You may think, well, okay, I can understand the school example. But why are so many stores closing? And even shopping malls? Shopping malls don't seem so densely packed. Why might they not be safe? It just so happens that a recent study showed that one cluster of SARS-CoV-2 infections in China were all linked to a single shopping mall. And so, the many tricks that this virus can use to get from person to person make it imperative that we all stay committed to social distancing. So, do all viruses spread in this way through droplets and surfaces? No, not at all. Some viruses spread in a similar way to SARS-CoV-2, like influenza. That's why washing your hands and staying home when sick is super important during every flu season. But other viruses, such as norovirus, can spread easily through contaminated food. And washing your hands is super important for preventing noro, too. Some other viruses, like HIV, spread through sex or sharing injection drug needles. And they are not related to washing hands at all. And some viruses spread through insect bites, such as Zika. So when different viruses spread in different ways, we also have to fight the spread of these viruses in different ways. So to prevent HIV transmission, we use condoms and prophylactic drugs like PrEP. For Zika, we try to stop insect bites with insect repellents. And for some viruses, like measles and polio, thankfully, we have very good vaccines. As of late March 2020, there are no drug or vaccine candidates that will be available in the foreseeable future. And so for now, the best we can do is minimize transmission events between people. But as we've observed, transmission from person to person is a complicated phenomenon. SARS-CoV-2 can get around using multiple tricks, and so we have to be mindful of all the ways that our behavior can help to spread disease. And hopefully this understanding will inspire us to participate in social distancing practices. So in the end, that's why we are working from home. That's why we can't go to the bar or to church. That's why a lot of things about society have slowed down or look different. Oh, we get it. It is tough. And we sure don't have a solution for all the problems that come with having to stay home. But we think that this is the best way to prevent this problem from becoming much, much worse. So hang in there. We're all in this together.